equation of a line. So in this section we just want to explore the equation of a straight line, the different forms that it can take and also how it relates to the graph of the straight line and trying to get that thinking between the algebraic representation and the graphical representation to be a bit more um, obvious or a bit more fluid. So there are two main forms in which we may be given the equation of a straight line. y equals mx plus c. So, um, and I know that that is commonly, um, certainly in other areas of the country and around the world, is more commonly referred to as y equals mx plus b. But regardless of the pronumerals you choose to use, we're talking about y is equal to a number multiplied by x plus another number. Um, or we might be given our equation of our line in general form. That is, a number times x plus a number times y plus a number is equal to zero. General form sometimes might also be given as a number times x plus a number times y equal to a number. It's a similar um, form. Now general form's not particularly useful in that it doesn't immediately tell us anything about the graph. Um, it's, not, it's quite easy to work with. It often um, means that we can avoid having to use fractions if we express a um, straight line equation in this form but it doesn't immediately tell us anything. Whereas gradient intercept form immediately tells us what the gradient of the line is and what the y-intercept of that line is. So if we have a little bit of a think about that, if I think about a really simple linear equation, so just y equals 2x, for example, if we think about this algebraic relationship, we can see that every time I increase the value of x by 1, I'm going to be increasing the value of y by 2. So for example, if x is equal to 0, y will equal 0. Then if I increase the value of x by 1, so I say, well, let's let x equal 1, y is now going to equal 2, so the value of y increased by 2. If x is equal to 2, so again I've increased it by 1, y is now going to be equal to 4, so it's again increased by 2. And that's the definition of gradient. As x increases by 1, how does y change? So we can see very clearly that this value in front of the x is what's going to be affecting the gradient. How much does y change as x changes? So that value gives us the gradient, the coefficient of x is the gradient. And then the y-intercept, um, again if we think about when we calculate a y-intercept, we're looking at the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, that is the point where the x value is 0. Everywhere along the y-axis the x-coordinate is 0. So if we let x equal 0 in this equation, this whole term is 0 and so y is just equal to c. And so that c value gives us the y-intercept. So this is a very useful form in terms of visualising the graph. So let's have a look at a couple of different examples involving linear equations. So we have an equation here in example 1 given in gradient intercept form and we want to convert it into general form. So as I mentioned previously, the main reason an equation might be given in general form is usually to avoid using fractions. So this equation when in gradient intercept form has a fraction and that's because its gradient is negative two-thirds. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of that fraction. So I know if I multiplied two-thirds by three it would no longer be a fraction. So I'm going to multiply every term in this equation by three to get three y equals negative two x plus twelve. And now to get it in general form I want to move everything onto the one side of the equation keeping as many things positive as I can. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. I'm going to leave 3y on the left hand side. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And there I have my equation in general form. So as I said, it no longer involves fractions, but it also no longer tells us anything directly about the graph immediately. We would need to manipulate it back to gradient intercept form to see the gradient and the y-intercept. So in the second example here, we wish to state the gradient and the y-intercept. So we want to take this equation, which is in general form, or a slightly modified version of general form, and um, rearrange it into gradient intercept form so we can identify the gradient and the y-intercept. So gradient intercept form involves having y as the subject. So that's our goal. We want to get y on its own. So I'm going to subtract 4x to, from both sides. So I'm going to write it first just so it's in the standard form. And then we're going to divide everything in the equation by 2. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 3 on 2. 
and now that it's in gradient intercept form, we can clearly see that the gradient is the coefficient of x, so negative 2, and the y-intercept is at positive 3 on 2, so it has coordinates 0, 3 on 2. Now, in example 3, we want to start to think about the idea of what it means for a point to lie on the line. So the whole idea of a graph, if we're sketching the graph of 5x minus 4y equals 20, we're marking all of the points on the Cartesian plane that fit this equation. So all of the pairs of x and y values that make this equation true. So in order for a point to lie on a line, the x and y values of that point, when we substitute them into the equation, must make the equation true. So in this particular example, we're told that these two points lie on this line. So 0 and an unknown value, an unknown y value, must make this equation true. So essentially what we need to do is find, well, when x is equal to 0, what is y equal to? So we know that when x is equal to 0, we're going to get 5 times 0 minus 4 times y equals 20. So 5 times 0 is 0, so we get negative 4y equals 20, and so y is equal to negative 5. So that's telling us that the point 0, negative 5 is on the line. So therefore, a must be equal to negative 5. In part b, we know that the point B, negative 6, lies on the line. So what this question is really asking us to do is to find the x value when y is equal to negative 6. So when y equals negative 6, we're going to have 5x minus 4 times negative 6 is equal to 20. So that's 5x plus 24 equals 20 subtracting 24 from both sides, dividing both sides by 5. So when, x e sorry, when y equals negative 6, x is equal to negative 4 fifths. So that implies that the point negative 4 fifths, negative 6 is on the line. So therefore, the x coordinate when y is negative 6, b, is negative four-fifths. Okay, so here we have a line with equation y equals mx plus four. So we don't, its gradient is unknown. It has a y-intercept at four. Passes through the point three, five. Find the value of m. So we can think about this quite literally and by thinking about the graph. And essentially what we have is a line that has a gradient of, sorry, a y-intercept at 4. And it also passes through the point um, 3, 5. And we want to know its gradient. So you can visualize or even sketch this diagram and work out the gradient of the line joining the points 0, 4, and 3, 5. So rise, overrun, is one-third. So m is clearly one-third. A slightly, um, I guess, more mathematically mature way to go about this, and also a method that's going to work no matter where the unknown is in your equation. So if, for example, I give you a quadratic equation with one of the coefficients unknown and I tell you a point that it goes through, this method will work. Whereas thinking quite literally about gradient is quite a limiting sort of method. So basically we have an equation here, y equals mx plus c, uh, sorry, mx plus 4, with an unknown, val an unknown coefficient, m. But we know about a point. We know that it goes through the point 3, 5. So if the line passes through the point 3, 5, that means that algebraically, in the equation, when we let x equal 3, y will equal 5. So let's substitute that into this equation. y is equal to 5 when x is equal to 3. So we get 5 is equal to 3m plus 4. 
and we should be able to solve this equation for m. So subtracting 4 from both sides, dividing both sides by 3. So both methods give you the same solution and I can understand that the first method might draw you a bit more, it's quite um, clear what's going on there. But this second method, this idea of being given a point, just substituting the point into the equation and solving for the unknown value, is a much more flexible method as we move through different kinds of functions and other sorts of problems. So in this last example here, we have a line with equation ax plus 2y minus 10 equals 0, and we're told it has a gradient of 6. Now just before we move on to this problem, thinking about the previous problem, this is another example where we've got an unknown in this equation, a. And I could have told you that this line passes through the point 5, 8. And the way to solve a, which isn't the gradient, would mean that um, would be to sol substitute the point 5, 8 into this equation. So when x equals 5, y equals 8, solve for a, and there you've got your value of a. So as I said, that second method in the previous example is a much more um, applicable method, I guess. So in this problem, though, we're not given a point that this line passes through. We're told about its gradient. It has a gradient of 6. So this line we've been given, ax plus 2y minus 10 equals 0, is in general form. And so general form doesn't tell us anything about the gradient or the intercepts. Um, but, and we've given information about the gradient, so we want to be able to use that. So I'm going to convert this equation into gradient intercept form. So let's make y the subject. So I'm going to subtract ax from both sides and add 10 to both sides. And then I'm going to divide everything in the equation by 2. And so now we can see, now that we have it in gradient intercept form, this expression here describes the gradient. And I know that the gradient equals 6. So I know that negative a on 2 has to equal 6 if this line is to have a gradient of 6. So multiplying both sides by negative 2, a will be equal to negative 12.